Kathy Selman is a go-getter. Hi, Gina. This is Kathy. Hey, I just wanted to confirm that we're going to be meeting tomorrow to work on the content for our Wink presentation next week. After years right. in real estate, so we'll Selman we'll helped start a women's uh -huh. networking group. Okay, we're going to be talking These about days, brandy. Selman doesn't drink at all, not even socially. But for seven years, she couldn't get through a day without having four glasses of wine. Boy, it's a fog. A lot of it's a fog. You know, you go through regret, remorse, guilt, embarrassment. You're just so, you have no confidence. You lose your self-esteem. Uh, it was awful. Absolutely, it's devastating. Selman has been married for 30 years and has two grown sons who are both entrepreneurs. She's tried a lot of different methods to quit drinking. I had acupuncture, which was great and gave me some results. I tried natural supplements and herbs. I had ex very expensive counseling and therapy. But what if there were a pill that could help heavy drinkers kick the habit? Addiction researcher Barbara Mason has just published a study that suggests the drug gabapentin could fit the bill. Gabapentin is FDA approved to control seizures in people who have epilepsy. For years, doctors have also prescribed it to treat alcohol dependence. But gabapentin hasn't been tested in a large, randomized clinical trial for that purpose, until now. Dr. Mason's study involved 150 longtime alcoholics who averaged 40 drinks a week. Half were given gabapentin, and half got a placebo. After 12 weeks, the rate of people who completely abstained from alcohol was four times higher for those taking gabapentin than those taking a placebo. What's more, those results were sustained for months after people stopped taking the drug. And these effects are as large or larger than the FDA-approved treatments. But what's important is that gabapentin also had the beneficial effects on sleep and mood and craving. And it was found to be very safe and well tolerated. Psychiatrist Krista Royball directs the Scripps Drug and Alcohol Treatment Center. It's not affiliated with the Scripps Research Institute. People decide to get sober. It's a huge accomplishment to make that decision. They go through detox, which may or may not be difficult. And then they're expecting to feel good. But as Royball explains, People in the early stages of recovery often suffer from sleeplessness, depression, and disabling anxiety. Those painful symptoms can make it hard for alcoholics to resist taking a drink. That's why she often prescribes gabapentin. And what I say to patients with gabapentin is it'll just amp it down. It'll take the edge off. It, it's not a cure-all, but it really helps with the negative psychological effects. But there is a school of thought that believes medical treatment for alcohol addiction isn't the best approach. You're not bad people trying to get good, you know, we're, we're sick people trying to get well. I don't know how long your history of drinking and using has been, uh, but it takes a long time to undo it. At the Fellowship Center in Escondido, Executive Director Paul Savo leads a discussion group. For more than 50 years, this program has helped thousands of men recover from addiction to alcohol and other drugs. The Fellowship Center is based on the principle that people in recovery are best helped by others who have gone through the process themselves. This so-called social model approach is based on the principles of Alcoholics Anonymous. Sabo says heavy drinkers don't generally respond well to medical treatment for their addiction, where a doctor or other provider is in charge of the recovery process. They respond to a sense of, of understanding and connection. They respond to uh, uh, the fact that uh, I'm an alcoholic talking with somebody who really understands where I came from and they know what I've been through. Men live together in sober housing at the Fellowship Center for an average of five months. Some stay as long as a year. They go through counseling, 12-step meetings, and a variety of skill building activities. Over time, they learn how to function without having to rely on booze or other drugs. Sabo says there's nothing necessarily wrong with the idea of taking a pill for a short time to help stabilize someone who's in recovery, but... Unless it's lifelong, you know, it's, it's only a small part of the recovery process. We instill these lifelong uh, fundamental tools that allow a person to uh, always fall back on certain things that they've done here that reduces anxiety, reduces stress, helps them get through the tough spots without resorting to alcohol or drugs. To be sure, addiction researcher Barbara Mason says there are many pathways to recovery. 
She maintains her study shows gabapentin can be a big help. Mason concedes neither gabapentin nor any other medication on the market is a cure-all for people who have been drinking heavily for years. You know, you just don't turn that chip around with a pill, you know, <laughs> just a pill. In most cases, uh, you really need to do work and, um, you know, that's a personal part of the journey of recovery. Kathy Selman was finally able to give up drinking three years ago when she went through a different clinical trial at the Scripps Research Institute. To this day, Selman doesn't know if she was given a drug or a placebo. Either way, she's glad she kicked her habit. If I'd continued down that path, um, I don't know where I'd be today. It's, pretty, it's a pretty scary, it's a very sobering thought. <laughs> Kenny Goldberg, KPBS News.